When we use SwiftUI's at fetch request property wrapper, we can provide an array of sort descriptors telling core data how to order our results. We can also provide an NS predicate object, a test to apply to those results, and only objects that pass the test will be included in the final result array. Now the syntax of predicates honestly is not something you'd just guess, it's quite precise, but that's okay, because honestly you'll only use a handful of these ever, and so it's not as bad as you might think. Let's try it out here. In your data model, I'd like to add a new entity now, and call this thing ship. We're gonna make a bunch of spaceships from famous TV movies and shows, uh, and then press uh, add for here, and I'll give this thing a name and a universe. So let both these be strings, like this, string and string. Then back in our content view, we have an import for core data here, so we can use its internal types, plus our managed object context to read our core data objects. And then we'll add a fetch request. We'll say at fetch request with no sort descriptors, so I don't care how it's sorted, and with a nil predicate, so there's no filtering, we'll then say var ships is fetched results of type ship. And now in our body, we're gonna say as a vstack, and there will be a list of our ships using the whole ship as its identifier, so id ship, uh, id self, sorry, then ship in, then text ship.name, no coalescing, unknown name. Below that, we'll add a button to add some examples. And here we'll just make four examples, starships from various TVs and movies. So we'll say, uh, let ship one be a ship in the context of our managed object context. Ship one name is enterprise. Then ship one universe is Star Trek. Now I'm getting build errors here because Xcode hasn't made the ship class from core data yet. It actually isn't an error. If I press build, it'll be fine. And it'll probably reappear. Yeah, so it says succeeded and then shows errors anyway. That's just Xcode being special. Um, ignore that. Instead, copy and paste your ship a few times. So we have four ships in total. We'll call this ship uh, two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four and then add different data. So our second ship will be called uh, the Defiant. Then below that we'll have the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. And then the Executor, also from Star Wars, like that. So we're gonna add four different kinds of Starship to our data, and then go ahead and save our Manage Object Context. Now with that in place, I'll press Command R to build and run our code. And all being well, we should be able to press that add example button to add all four objects to our data and see them all in here. So I'll press add examples now, and boom, there we go. There's no sorting, that's okay. Now we're seeing all of them because we haven't asked for a filter. There's no predicate here at all. But we could say, actually, I only want to see uh, the ships that belong to the Star Wars universe, for example. To do that, you change predicate nil to be predicate ns predicate, predicate, there we go, with a format of universe is equal to, single quotes, Star Wars, like that. So we're filtering, the universe value has to have the text Star Wars inside it, otherwise it's the same. So I'll go ahead and press Command R again, and hopefully now we'll only see Millennium Falcon and Executor. Boom, there we go. Now, this gets complicated if the things you want to have inside here includes quote marks. Because you can now have like backslash quote or who knows what going on. Um, so it's much more common, rather than putting the exact things you want to in there, we instead do things like percent at. Percent at, there we go, percent at which means insert some data here. And it allows us to provide that data as a parameter to the predicate rather than typing it in line into that string. So instead we'd say universe equals percent at, and then after the string, comma, Star Wars. And that Star Wars gets put into here. So it avoids having to have exactly carefully crafted escape sequences here 
the NS predicate. It's a nicer way of working. Um, as well as equals equals, we could use uh, you know less than or greater than to filter them, for example. So we could say, uh, show me uh, all ships where the name is less than percent at, and then for the uh, value going in, uh, I could say F, for example, which ones come before F in the alphabet, and then I'll press uh, run on that one. And now we should see a defiant enterprise and executor because the name Falcon, of course, comes after F. Now, percent at is doing, obviously, a lot of work behind the scenes here. Um, you know, it's converting Swift data like F and this string here into their core data equivalent. It's doing a lot of work for us here. Uh, and actually, you can do surprisingly advanced things here. You know, we could have said, I want to have um, the format universe in and then percent at and now provide an array of universes. Like, I don't mind uh, what starship I see as long as it comes from either the Aliens universe or the Firefly universe or the Star Trek universe, for example. And it will automatically understand, well, on Swift Array, you mean universe in one of those three things and now see defined an enterprise. You can, if you want to, also use predicates to examine part of a string. You could say, begins with or contains. We could say uh, that our format this time will be name begins with, look at the exact structure of this. It's a very, very precise format. Um, begins with percent at. And after that, this time will be E. And so this time we should see uh, enterprise and executor in whatever order comes back. Boom, that, that order there. Um, and this is case sensitive. Um, you can that will only find enterprise and executor because they start with a capital E. If I'd done a lowercase e, uh, we would find uh, it doesn't actually work anymore. You get nothing back because it's case sensitive. If you wanted to get things back anyway, you would use begins with, brace yourself, square brackets C. That makes it a case insensitive begins with search. And now the lowercase e should return correctly enterprise and executor like that and uh, again there's contains works the same way you can have contains by itself or contains bracket c brackets to get the case insensitive contains it's down to you finally if you want to you can flip things around to get the inverse predicate using not so we could say um what we have to say uh our format is now not name begins with E, uh, case insensitive, right? So we're saying every ship that does not start with uppercase or lowercase E now, if we do that correctly, it is so precise. And there we go, defined and Millennium Falcon goes back. So it's it's very, very powerful. Um, if you want even more advanced predicates, you can do that too. You can There's actually an and you can put inside there, not this and this or this, whatever you want to. Um, or thanks to our import for core data, there's a new type you can make called an NS compound predicate, and it lets you build one predicate out of several smaller ones. 